So ever since the release of the One Piece live action poster a couple of days ago, I have seen a lot of positivity from some people, mainly the people who have been following the One Piece live action ever since it, they got announced and the cast got announced and all that stuff, and then a lot of negativity from people who haven't really been following that much, but from One Piece fans still, and just maybe from people who just have seen live action anime adaptations and don't trust them, specifically from Netflix, because we've already gotten such classic films as the Death Note live action, um, the Cowboy Bebop live action, the Bleach live action, the Fullmetal Alchemist live actions, and I could go on and on, and like, even from the beginning, we've been scorned for a while, because, well, Dragon Ball Evolution, but... I thought I'd come on here just to spread some positivity and talk about maybe ways that this live action could be a success and could be different. First of all, let's talk about things that this live action needs to do in order to differentiate itself from all the other live actions and basically bridge that uncanny valley between anime and live action in order to kind of meet people in the middle and not come off as really weird when it finally comes out. First things first, a thing that everybody's been talking about. La Chanclas, uh, Luffy's flip-flops in the poster, you can see they're gone, he's not wearing them, people are freaking out over that, he's talking about, what, how could you move his flip-flops, they're iconic, what, what, what are we gonna do, if they're willing to, willing to change the flip-flops, what else are we gonna change? Calm down, this is a good thing, that they changed the flip-flops, because, you just think, I don't know if you've ever watched One Piece, but Luffy does a lot of running, Luffy does a lot of jumping, there's a lot of flipping, a lot of fighting and kicking and all those all those things. I don't know if you've ever worn flip-flops. But you can't really you can't really do that while you're wearing flip-flops. It it's very painful, it's very difficult, and it hurts. And definitely for the actors who do a lot of their own stunts, which is great, by the way. And for these even when they don't can't do their own stunts, the stunt doubles they cannot be wearing flip-flops. It would they would get injured so fast that the whole production it'd be it'd be a nightmare. Emily Rudd even took to Instagram talking about why they use the flip-flops and why they use the shoes instead of the flip-flops rather. To which she said, "All of us did as much of our own stunt work as we were allowed, and if we didn't, it was usually due to safety, which is where our incredible and beyond talented stunt team came in. Sandals, unfortunately, are not the safest footwear to do stunt work in." and we didn't want y'all to miss out on the amazing work Inyaki Go can do and did. Which is basically what I just said, basically saying that flip-flops are dangerous. We don't want people wearing them while we're doing these crazy stunts. So it's important that they wear those, that's a good thing. And now we're going to get into some of the things that they should, some, of, some other things that they should be changing, hopefully will change, like the flip-flops that kind of will make it less weird, but that uncanny valley. Um, first of all, Usopp's, Usopp's nose. Usopp is, don't, don't do the long nose. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. It will, it will look terrible no matter what you do. And even if by some form of metric that you do get it to look good, I just don't think it, it really matters that much. Like Usopp really does not need his nose like that. It's, it's funny for like, oh, he's a liar. Pinocchio has long nose. Da, 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 da. But it's just, it really not be beneficial to even attempt the long nose like some of these extra little character quirks that i'm going to talk about just really don't need to be in here like sanji's eyebrow sanji's eyebrow you can do a little bit of a swoop at the end like a little little, little, little swirly doodad but you don't want to do the full swirl that's just not a good idea it would look weird and we just we're, the goal is to make sure that regular viewers don't get put off by the show. Too much weirdness kind of make it meet it with a halfway point where the anime is weirdness here and but it can still be believable in real life, which is something we're gonna talk about a bit more later. Another thing is mainly has to do with the 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 show's comedy. Um and a lot of anime comedy in general has to do with a lot of uh, perverted jokes, especially with Sanji's character. Sanji's character makes a lot of perverted jokes, so he's a huge simp lord, and thank god we were told by Matt Owens on this most recent Reverie that he will not be the same Sanji from the anime. They're saying they're not going to completely change his character. They're just toning down the weird parts of Sanji, the more perverted parts, which 
is a good thing because again we don't want to pull push people off of this character It'd be very very uncomfortable to see a grown man just like being openly perverted and nobody like calling him out for that also on the topic of perversion just dial down the metric amount of half naked women in this show like i get it waifus but also don't have Nami be walking around in only a bra like I get it, we're not even at the time skip yet, but you just just the preamble. Um, it's just it, it it it's not practical and it just wouldn't look good, I think. Alright, let's talk about what a live action in general needs to do to basically bridge the gap and come up as normal to both um long time viewers of the source material and new viewers that are being brought in because of this adaptation. And let's talk about one of the most famous live-action adaptations of all time, the MCU. Uh, famously, the MCU is the most popular film franchise to ever come out with 20-some-odd movies. I don't know how many TV shows at this point, but it's doing really good for itself. People really love the MCU, but that wasn't really always the case for Marvel films. In the beginning, Marvel had a hard time adapting its structure from comics to live-action. Just look at some of the earlier films, the first rendition of the Fantastic Four films, the an old Captain America film, Ang Lee's The Hulk, um, the unreleased, famously unreleased Fantastic Four film, even Banner's The Hulk. Well, even though it was well received, it's not really a good adaptation of The Hulk from comic to live action. No, not really until films like. Um, X-Men 2000, Spider-Man 2002, Iron Man 2008, that did Marvel really start to be able to kind of see, okay, this is what you can do in comics, and this is what you can do in live action. And anime is at that point where they are where they are seeing, okay, we can't do this level of silliness because cartoon character people, people do things that cartoon characters do, it looks really weird, and it makes you uncomfortable. So we kind of just need to tone down the characters in order to make them more realistic and believable. Most notably, Luffy. I already talked earlier about how they were going to make tone downs of Sanji's perversion, make him less of a full out pervert, and it makes him make him more of a, just a, just a suave dude who's hitting on girls. Um, but Luffy is kind of the bread and butter of this show. He is the main draw, he's the main character, and the most important piece to get to stick. Now I trust Matt Owens in knowing this, but you cannot translate Luffy from directly from page to screen and expect that to go well. Mostly because Luffy is a very, very cartoony character. He's very overly stupid, very overly excitable. Just the amount that he eats, how he goes about daily some uh, problems, just he would be kind of annoying to the average viewer if they translated it like that. What they should do with Luffy is kind of still make him believably stupid. Like, like, like believably he's he's dumb and he should seem unfit to be captain, at least at first. But he should still keep that, that lovable childlike charm that makes him who he is. Kind of like a less serious Jack Sparrow. Like, Jack Sparrow seemed dumb, and he seemed off and odd. Kind of like a less serious, more childlike Jack Sparrow. That's how Luffy should come off in order to kind of make it feel okay with new viewers and come up well in live action with old viewers as well. Lastly, quickly we're going to cover some things that narratively don't work. Um, not, not that don't work, but that should be corrected for live action because we have 25 years of hindsight. So we can better foreshadow things like hockey more than in the scene with um, Shanks. We can better foreshadow things um, like the worst generation seeing their bounty posters all over. We can uh, correct the height of characters. Um, not necessarily something we need to do in hindsight for, but something that we should do because a lot of the times, Luffy fights characters that are 10 feet tall, 20 feet tall, and we don't really have the CGI budget to be making every third person fucking a million feet tall. It's just not, it's just not a feasible plan. 
we should be doing is that there are some characters like down the line that should be bigger like Kaido and Big Mom um, Little Ors Jr. For the most part maybe even Katakuri but for the most part those characters that are comically big should be toned down to a minimum left for only mainly like giants and some villains like Doflamingo doesn't need to be that big and Whitebeard doesn't need to be that big but other things they need to change in hindsight for the story kill off characters one piece and oda has a problem with leaving characters dead that should be dead I'm looking at you pal I'm looking at you pagaya i'm looking at you pound okay the will of p is strong but we, just, we do not need the will of p in this live action we need to rinse it because how are people going to take it seriously if people explode and just get shot in the head and then wake up later it's not it's not something that really should be left uh just kill off some characters to make it more believable make the story feel more real because it really takes you out of, uh, of the story when you think that, that character really should be dead why is he still alive he is very much dead you know there's a problem with killing off characters i think we need to fix that in this live action but if we are able to make a lot of those changes to kind of make one piece feel less cartoony and more realistic seeing that it is live action so it should be privy to having a realistic tone with realistic features in the world so if we can do that then it will be that much more likely to be successful and hopefully it will be able to break the curse that all live action anime are just not good marvel broke it so why can't we and with and with that being said i think i'm going to wrap the video here uh if you enjoyed this please do all the youtube stuff uh it would very much help me in my goal of getting on the reverie if you don't know what the reverie is, it's every six months or so, a lot of big One Piece YouTubers and some smaller ones are invited to go on a 12-hour One Piece stream where they just talk about One Piece. And I love One Piece. I would like to be on the reverie. So if you could please help me get on the reverie, that'd be very much appreciated. And, um, end of video.